hello, uh, good morning, welcome um, to uh, to our presentation. Um, we are really going to aim to do this uh, in uh, around 20 minutes. Um, uh, this is a new series of presentations for us and we ideally want to get as much information out in a short period of time as we can. Uh, we don't want to tell you absolutely everything. We're hoping to be able to give you uh, a short introduction um, uh, with the aim that uh, if you'd like to uh, know more, uh, we'll happily come in and give you more detail. Um, so that's the point of these. Um, if you uh, don't know me, I'm Mark Risby. I'm the CTO at Boxer. Um, and we're imaginatively calling these events Boxer Shorts. It's, a, it's an old cheesy name from our past, but we decided to bring it back. Short briefings, 20 minutes end to end there you go and uh, this is the first one uh, that we've done uh, and really happy uh, to Im have invited mass tech here uh, to talk about their accumulate product um, it was one of our stars from IBC this year it's a, a new thing um, for mass tech um, intelligent storage and asset lifecycle management it's a, a new platform that can do multiple jobs uh, that fits a lot of different people's needs um, for managing their media and linking together various systems either on-prem or in cloud. So um, it really excited us. We could immediately see applications for it. And um, you know, uh, we, we think there's something there for, for lots of different people, uh, whether it's in uh, broadcast or post. So um, to take this a bit further, I want to introduce John Riley. He's the director of pre-sales uh, at Maztec, and he's going to be the man that's going to take us um, through, the, uh, through the detail. So now all I have to do is pass this over to John. Okay, okay. John, you should have um, control now. Good stuff. Let me take over, Mark. Um, yeah, so um, I'm John Riley, and I run the pre-sales for Mastec. Um, I don't know uh, how much we know about Mastec before. So initially, we merged um, with SGL uh, about two and a half years ago. So. Uh, SGL uh, primarily aimed at, at archive storage management and lifecycle um, and had customers, you know, EMEA, uh, Asia Pack and, and Americas and Mastec came from a, a bit of archive. So it was a crossover at the merger, um, but primarily they, they had uh, some nice plugins and some workflow engines and, and front ends. Um, so over the last, say, two years of the merger, we've tried to bring all the customer bases onto one platform. So at IBC, we announced Accumulate. So this is uh, the, the product or the application going forward for all the Mastec and SGL customers worldwide. Um, new front end, new kind of setup, new workflows. Um, we had, you know, the, the company as a whole has a, as, a, as a kind of thought that we're thought of as being like a legacy archive system. So tape libraries and all this kind of old storage. And, and over the last couple of years, we've moved on a lot more with cloud integration, some AI work. So Cumulate takes all that into consideration as well. So we're not just looking at legacy tape archives anymore. We're also looking at you know, uh, object storage locations, cloud locations, and also the, the movement of content in these cloud locations. Because obviously with, with Amazon and Microsoft, you've got the different tiers of storage. So you've got the S3, then you've got the, the Glacier storage, and then you've got Glacier Deep Archive. So we manage the movement uh, based on lifecycle rules between those tiers so the customer pays less money effectively. There's obviously a, a slower retrieval time, 12 hours from, from uh, deep archive, but the, the price from, from Amazon and Azure and all these guys is a, is a lot cheaper. So Cumulate, um, so it's a front end to manage your, your assets, your you know, uh, content that's on say uh, online, near line storage, taking it into archive, taking it into cloud. This is the front end that allows users to do this kind of workflow outside of media asset management or production asset management. Um, it can start off from, say, just editors with some shared storage and give a, you know, a very, very simple archive um, or, or content movement policies to, to take that content off the, the near line storage and put it in somewhere else. And we'll kind of manage the life cycle of that. And Cumulate gives you the front end to be able to search and retrieve or move the content to other locations. So I'll just log in to take you through the UI. So initially, you've got a, a default dashboard. So, so a user can log into here, and they can have their own dashboard. Or if they're part of a role, they're an archivist or media manager, they can have a dashboard created for that role. And then specific users will go into those roles. They all get the same dashboard. So when we've got set up for, for the demos here, um, this one gives us an overview of recent items that we've moved around in the, in the kind of management system. 
So this is recent stuff that I've, I've used with this, with this user. Um, I have cache, so I've got some kind of disk array there, which I'm using to do say transcodes and create proxying, extract thumbnails, this kind of information. So I get an overview of you know, what my percentage free space is on that. And again, you can have different widgets to kind of show different workflows that you're looking at. Um, I've got a job monitor showing me the archive jobs I've got going on. Um, I can look at the content in the system that we're managing. So for example, in this system, we've got 77 assets. Now, uh, obviously we work in assets and instances. So the asset could be the video file, the audio track, some uh, cut sheets, closed caption files, um, all those together, maybe one asset. And if we've got multiple copies, so we've got a copy on cloud, we've got a copy on tape, that would be two instances of that asset. So, so the instances are the number of copies of the asset that we've got. Um, I've also got a job monitor set up to show the transfers in the system. So these are the, maybe not just archive jobs, they're just moving it from one location to the other. And the same, there could be a, a monitor for, for transcodes as well. So if we're rewrapping it or transcoding it into a different format, um, so we're taking content that into to Avid, so we're rewrapping it as OP Atom. Um, these are the transfers that you can see going on here. So that's kind of like the default dashboard that you get. Um, then we can delve deeper into kind of the search. So this is, this is where it gets a little bit more powerful. So one of the big new things about Cumulate is it's got a federated search. So if you have multiple systems, multiple Cumulate systems, regardless of if you've got asset management or not, but if you've got say Grass Valley in London and you've got uh, Avid in Singapore and you've got TMD in, 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 in uh, East Coast America, um, if we're managing the, the content movement there, even though the MAMs can't talk to each other and search across, because Grass won't talk to Avid, Avid won't talk to TMD, we can allow that. So, so we can search across the archives worldwide or in different regions within the UK, this kind of things. So it's kind of useful for like BBCs, ITVs, these kind of guys. Um, so I have a local setup and, and for the demo, we're running in AWS as well. So everything here, all the actual data movers and the database and the application servers and all this is all running in, 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 in cloud for our demo. So we have the London instance, which we use for IBC. I've got an East Coast instance, which is in North Virginia. So again, as another Amazon separate Cumulate install, and I've got one on the West Coast uh, for, for, the, for the main NAV. So that's NAV New York, and this is for, for, for the big NAV, which is in North California. So I can have multiple instances in a region. So on the East Coast, I've got North Virginia, but I can also have New Jersey, New York, and you can search just across a specific site, or you can search across the, the whole region. So if I take them off for now, if I'm searching locally, I get a view of my assets locally in London. And everyone here is marked off with where that content is. And I've got 77 results showing. So this is the content we're managing in London. If I then select the East Coast region and do the search, you can see my result set's gone up. I can, I'm isolating my content in London with that, that London identifier. But if I come down to here, I've got something in North Virginia. And I can scrub across the thumbnails, get a rough idea of that, what that is. Um, I can open it up. Uh, I can play through the proxy that we've got created. And, and again, that's playing out in North Virginia right now. And I can see where my copies are. So I've got a copy on my local cache, I've got a copy in the watch folder, and then I've got my proxy file. So it's quite powerful in terms of, you know, whether it's just a small site or whether you're looking at it, deploying it across multiple regions, you can search, retrieve and localize your assets here. So if I click on localize, that will transfer that asset from North Virginia over to me in London. So back in the search, the, the views we get, so you can have the thumbnail view. So that views you know, each thumbnail for every site. Um, I can have, you can show the instance name or I could put in different uh, metadata here to, to display. So it could say the location of where that content is rather than the name of the content. Um, I can pretty much scrub across the files as well. So I can come into here and look for something. If I find out roughly what I'm looking for, I can get a, a more closer idea of what that content is. And again, by holding the Alt button, um, you can scrub across everything if you've got you know, multiple similar clips and you're looking for something specifically. Um, from the search, we can do an advanced search. So we can go in and look for some specific metadata. So I could look, say, for an asset that has some metadata, if I drag this across here. So I could look for where it came from, so the source of the content. And I can give it a, an operator match and I can say, look for something that say came from a watch folder and it's already filling out what it knows. So I've got my results set here. And if I do my search, 
that's everything that we've got located currently on a watch folder. So you can build these searches up and then you can save them here. So that user's got a save search if they're you know, looking for content that's been archived in the last hour or moved in the last day. Um, that search can be always on their, on their dashboard so they can click through it without recreating it. Um, again, so going into the search, if I just don't take the advanced, I can come in here and look for some content. And as I'm typing, it's matching what we've got under management. So I can come in here and look for this Moscow clip, which is a nice example because I've got it on a few locations. So we can see this Samsung clip um, here, and I've got it in multiple locations. I've got it in Amazon, I've got it on my watch folder, I've got my proxy here on my cache, and I've got a copy in it that, that I've moved from Aspira to Amazon. Um, with that as well, there's cut sheets and NCS stories, so you can go in and have a look for the cut sheet on it, and that will open up the PDF file. Um, again, we manage, the, we can manage the content no matter where it's located. So if you've got cut sheets and you've got uh, PDFs and you've got the video files and audio files, if we can cr if we can find some metadata that's common to those, we can group them together. So if you're if you're as I said, if you've got a, a bat on XML file and you've got the high res in a different storage location, if, even if it's as simple as the file name is the same, the extension may be different. John.mp4, John.pdf, John.xml. We can look for like assets no matter where they're located and pull them into the archive um, with a workflow. So even if it's, the data is scattered everywhere, we can pull that in and make that one asset. Um, when we've got cut sheets or PDFs or anything that's attached to it, we can also search on these. And this is an example to show that the, the foreign language support. So if I come into here and I search for that, I get a match. And that's on the thumbnail view. If I now go to my tile view, I can see that it actually matched here on the cut sheet. And if I click on this, rather than opening the video proxy, it will open up me to the, the cut sheet where that content resides. Um, again, on the proxy side, you've got um, technical metadata. So if I'm looking at a specific piece of content here, I can get the technical metadata about it, the start time code, end time code, what format, um, you know, the resolution, video height, frame rate, this, this kind of thing. Um, and on the main view, when I'm looking at the proxy, I've got the user metadata. Um, a lot of these things are, are fixed, so certain fields are fixed, um, but others are up to the customer what they want to put in there. If they want to put in the reporter name or the person who shot the video or the, the editor or whoever worked on the content, we can put in that there as a drop down. So they get some kind of, um, I mean, this information is really up to what the customer or the user wants to put into there, but we can put in custom metadata fields. Um, we can also add things like markers and segments. So if I come into here and I want to give that a marker, it's probably more useful in sports clips. So where there's a penalty or a goal, this kind of thing, we can actually put a marker and, and put some metadata around that. So I can put in here comment blue phone, uh, select the color for the marker and create it, which is then searchable on the timeline. So if I come and do my search and I look for blue phone, it will take me straight to that marker point. If I have a look over here, there's my marker with its start time code. So if I search again here on blue, I get a match. I've got quite a few matches. If I look on my Samsung clip, blue phone. So if I click on that, it will load me up and take me straight onto the marker where that is. The markers can also be done automatically with a, with a shortcut. So if we go into settings, you can create custom markers here. So if I press key button one, I'll get sensor off, key button two, I'll get penalty, mosaic needed, and so on. So you don't have to manually go and add the marker every time, you just push your hotkey. Um, partial file restore is also another key element. So if we're working on the timeline, we can come across to something specific that we want. And I can take just that part of the file across. So if I'm here, so I can take, say, this part here, I can put in a, uh, an add segment, so I can put a mark in point. And then I can drag that to where I, I want to mark out. So I put it in there, set my mark out. Now I can either do a partial file restore directly from here, from this player, or I can save the segment as well and build up you know, smaller segments here. So if I come in here and put Snapchat, and I go create, so I've created a new segment. At this point, it's not new media, it's just a marker on the timeline. But from here, then I can create, create a new piece of material. So if I come along onto here and select partial file restore, I just need to send it to a location. So I can send it to the cloud, I can send it to an Aspira upload, 
for this one, I'll send to my cache because I've got some workflows here. So when I send this content back to cache, I've got a workflow that's going to create a proxy file. It's going to extract the thumbnails. It's going to extract the new the, the metadata. So it will make a brand new piece of media. And if I come into here and click on normal for the priority, that sets me up a running job. So if I come into my job monitor, and if I search for snap, so I'm looking for that specifically. Over here, so we've done the partial file restore, it's MPEG2, it's taken just that piece of content we want, it's extracted the metadata, so it's created a new start end time code. And then below these, I'm gonna create the proxy file. So this is gonna create from the MPEG2 down to MP4 one megabit, and then it's creating the thumbnails as well, so I can scrub across it. So when I go back to my search and go for snap, I get a new piece of material here. I click on that, and that, if I play it out, it's just that short I created. And, and again, that is a new piece of, of, of material that's in there. Um, the AI stuff, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. We've done implementations with Azure and Amazon and these kind of guys, uh, predominantly for ITV recently, um, where they've sent us you know clips of uh this morning at downtown we've sent the, the the proxy file to amazon and uh, it takes i don't know probably depending on the size of the clip it can take up to an hour this is a fairly large clip um and it feeds back to us any face recognition so for this one we set up with a with a face recognition on there and it returns back to us when it's finding people uh, you know within that file so basically, I can come along into here and search, say, for Holly Willoughby, and it will bring up all the locations where Holly, Holly Willoughby appears in different clips on there. And we've done, you know, a, a few of these files. I've done it for some of the Oscar clips and, and, and this kind of thing. So if I search in here for Rami. So on here, I've got a match. And again, it matches on Rami Malek for the name. If I click on that, it will open up and take me to the segment where his face appears. So the, we've also done um, speech to text conversion as well. A lot of it is kind of hit and miss. I mean, I would say they're not all perfect yet. It's just a, a kind of showcase of what we can do and what we're looking at doing at the moment. I mean, it, it, it finds, I mean, there are some people here marked as unknown, which, you know, are quite famous. Brian May, for example, but didn't detect his face in that clip. But other places it does. I mean, it picks out Mike Myers here, picks out Rami Malek in the front, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not perfect, but, but, that's down to really Amazon and, and the service that you use or, or Microsoft or whoever it is. But these are some of the things that we're doing with it. So that's kind of a way to view the proxy, do partial file restores, put your markers in this kind of thing. You can get an overview of your locations. So if I look at storage locations, I can see uh, these are ones we've got configured. So as I said, it could be an Avid ISIS we're monitoring. It could be a piece of cache, it could be a tape library, it could be cloud. You can come straight into the storage location, click on it, and show the content that exists in that location. So it's just a, a you know down and dirty way to get to the assets. Um, and also with Cumulate, we added more reporting. So it's using Kibana. So um, effectively, you can come in here and, and get um, create these dashboards that will give you more information about the storage system and the archive. So this one's our job transfers. It shows you know, the percentage of jobs we're doing between our cash and cognitive services. So that's the face recognition stuff. Transfers between um, Amazon S3, um, watch folder to cash movement. So these, it, you can create different things of what you wanna see. You can you know, look at your transfers in the last 24 hours, this kind of thing, and build and save these reports. Again, this one here shows the average speed in London, average speed in North Virginia, and any HTTP transfers we're doing. So th these reports, again, uh, this was the content one, shows me again the types of content that I've got around the world in all the federated systems. So I can see, you know, 10% of it's opiate and for Avid. I've got a lot of proxy in there um, and these kind of things. So yeah, so Cumulate works in that way. Also, we've done a couple of other implementations into uh, Media Composer and into uh, Adobe Premiere. So I, I don't know if we've got time, Mark, but um, I, I'll, I'll just see if I can share my Premiere screen. Let me just see here. Sure thing. We're close on our 20 minutes, but we're, we're going to give it a go. This is the first time, so we weren't 100% sure how, how we were going to be, so that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, no worries at all. So yeah, so in Premiere, you've got, you know, your normal, your normal kind of editor control. And in here, we've added our plugin. So accumulate plugin. Um, so we can come in, log in, and it's the same with the media composer as well. You've got the same functionality, 
within Premiere that you had in, in that web page. So it's just a plug into that. So I can search into here. I can look for specific assets like that Snapchat one, for example, and I can import that into, into Premiere. And you can say, right, where are you going to import it to? Which project? And those markers and metadata fields that I put in, we can import those as well. So if I put that on, that will import the, the marker files that I put on the timeline into the Premiere timeline that opens up the job monitor. So if effectively, you have the full power of Cumulate as the plugin within Premiere, just as you have with Media Composer as well. Yep, and uh, unless there's anything else, I'm, I'm pretty good with the demo for you guys. Are. That's brilliant. Excellent. Thank you, John. I'll see if I can reclaim the screen. Yeah. Okay. Um, excellent. Hopefully we're back on me again. Um, so I haven't seen any questions come up. Um, so uh, thank you everybody for that. Uh, if anyone wants to ask anything afterwards, we'll be sending out details um, with the um, uh, well, with the link to the video once we've done that. Um, hope we've given you a quick insight to what uh, MassTech and Cumulate can do. Uh, the federated search over multiple systems is something we were, you know, very excited about. But a lot of people have got content in different places, especially these days when companies are acquiring other companies, you have legacy systems and all of those type of things around. This gives us an ability to very quickly and for not a great deal of money, get in there and actually find out what you've got, enrich the metadata, do new things with it, move it in and out and around the cloud and come up with something you know that, that's very, very usable um, very quickly. So uh, if this is of uh, any interest, please contact the sales a person that you're dealing with on our side and we'll get you in for a closer demo. So other than that, um, just reminds me to say thank you very much for everybody uh, for coming and uh, we hope to see you at the next recording. Thanks very much.